Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Sunday, December 5th. And we are going to get right back into our interview with Michael Goodman. He is the founder and president of Wellstream Advisors. He's a certified financial planner. He's a CPA. He's uh, he's a he's kind of wonky. Ignore that accent, that big time New York accent. He's a Queens boy. He's done pretty well for himself. Today, we're going to be talking about withdrawal rates and something that's very much on your minds. We've been getting a lot of emails about it. We're talking about inflation and ways to to actually counter inflation in your portfolio. So here is the conclusion of our interview with Michael Goodman. Would you mind giving us a little soliloquy on withdrawal rate and what that is, why it has been coming under fire from this, you know, sort of generalized idea of you can pull 4% for your portfolio? Well, first of all, let's do this. What is a withdrawal rate and what is a safe withdrawal rate? What does that mean? Yeah, so a withdrawal rate means that you can withdraw this percentage of your portfolio every year for the rest of your life, and your portfolio theoretically would be okay. That that would give you the safe withdrawal rate. Now, when you say okay, does that mean you're preserving some corpus of that portfolio or you're dwindling it down to a, where you won't run out of money? Yeah, so the safe withdrawal rate would indicate that you would not run out of money at the end of your projection, which in my opinion should be well past life expectancy. It should be a minimum of 95, uh, probably should be 100. Withdrawal rates, when you and I first got into this business, people talked about a safe withdrawal rate of 4%, meaning that if you had a million dollar portfolio, you could take 40 grand out this year. So why is everyone talking about lowering the withdrawal rate? No one's doing four. It's got to be three or 3.3. What do you think about that? Well, they're talking about it because interest rates are so low. And on that portion of your portfolio, you're not earning enough rate of return. You know, frankly, I've never been a big fan of these withdrawal rates. It's good for sort of quick discussions or back of the envelope type of conversation, but it's not something that I would ever plan on. And the reason why that I feel that way is because you have to factor in too many other things. For example, is the money coming out of a retirement account or a non-retirement account? Because you have taxes can be a big factor in a retirement account. You have to also consider what are your other income sources? So do you have a pension? Do you have a pension that's tied to inflation so that that will increase over time? You know, what's your social security situation? When will that start? You know, all these things have to be factored in. A survivorship analysis, for example, if you have a couple that both taking social security and one were to pass, you're going to lose one of those social securities. And then also what happens to the expenses? Do you think your expenses will be the same? In some households, it, it looks pretty darn close. In some households, there's a big reduction in expenses. And then finally... Mm-hmm. What other events are happening in your lifetime that could impact your withdrawal? Do you buy a second home in 10 years or other goals? So some people are very static and that makes more sense, but some people are not. And you have to be very careful with these rules of thumb. When people are doing their planning, they're looking at retirement planning and they're coming to us and they want help. What is the general big mistake that most people really do consistently make when they're doing their retirement planning? The thing that people mistake when they do their retirement planning, by far, in my opinion, is underestimating how much money it takes to be unemployed for 30 years. Um, I love that you said that again. It's my favorite thing that you say. You're going to be unemployed for 30 years. That's right. And people just underestimate how much money you need to not have an income stream for a long period of time. I think a long time ago when I was writing my first book, you said to me, one of the big mistakes is that, which is people underestimate that, but also that people tend to overspend too early in their retirement. And I'm worried about that right this second, as a matter of fact, because I do feel like a lot of people have decided to retire early because they said, listen, something significant just happened. This thing called COVID has really changed me and I do not want to spend my life in fear and I want to go out and I want to enjoy myself or ourselves if they're coupled. Can you talk a little bit about the impact of spending too much money early in a retirement and the the disastrous impact that can have on your long-term results? Yes. If not planned for appropriately, Spending too much when you first retire could be devastating to your financial plan. And that's another really good reason why withdrawal rates are dangerous. 
So when you're making these projections, you should really identify a bump in spending in those initial years of retirement for whatever it is you want to do. And it's critical to have it as part of the plan. And it's also critical to make sure that there's enough money aside for that. Because studies have shown the most sensitive time to a retirement plan is the early years of retirement. Because if the market tanks right after you retire and you withdraw a big chunk of money for a couple of years and the market stays down, there is much less money left over to grow for the remainder of your retirement. Have you ever tested out this theory of limiting the amount of money during retirement in bear years and down years, maybe letting people run a little bit on the upside? Or do you find that people really just need to know what is my, like, what's my pay for these 30 years that I'm going to be unemployed? What am I going to get paid? Can it work when people have a somewhat of a sliding scale? Most people don't want to moderate their spending in retirement. The idea that they have in their head is these are my years to spend and I don't really want to be impacted by the market. But I think what it comes down to is an individual case by case basis. And you can have conversations with clients where you can say to them, hey, if you're going to continue to spend in this market and it's a sustained downturn, we should really look at what could happen in these projections and give you a sensitivity to what your next 10 years could look like. Or you could say to them, you know, we really want to get an understanding of what your portfolio looks like. If you want to take more money, let's consider taking maybe some more from the bond portion of the portfolio and letting your stocks keep going so that they can recover. Okay, so there's just weeks to go before the end of the year. What is the most frequently asked question from your client base when it comes to the end of the year? Or is it you just saying, can I please get on your calendar? Please focus on your money. (laughs) Most clients don't want to focus on their money, it seems, uh, towards you know the holidays, but they are concerned about tax planning and they are concerned about making sure that there's no new legislation that's going to impact them. There's been so much focus in the news about tax law changes that people are oversensitized to what might be coming down the pipe that's going to impact them. And the majority of folks aren't actually even going to be impacted at all. Very often when there's news about tax law changes, I get clients calling me very worried. And when I find out and ask them what particular issue they've heard about the news that they're worried about concerning them, they don't even know. Their response is typically, I don't even know. I just hear that it's going to be bad for me. And they want to get an assessment. So they're really just looking for a sort of a common call to let them know if there's going to be any impact to them. So, Michael, um, just before we let you go, what is your your advice regarding buying either treasury inflation protected securities or I bonds? Well, I bonds are great. The challenge with the I bonds is that there's a limit as to how much you could buy. And I believe you have to buy them direct from the government. So there's not a lot of facility, if you will, or help you can get to do that. And there's a, a definite limit. And it's, I believe, a low mi- limit on how much you could buy. But the I-bonds from a rate of return standpoint seem like a great thing for most people right now. As far as tips or treasury inflation protected securities, those are good. I prefer the shorter term tips as opposed to the longer term tips right now because what we really want to do is protect against the short term inflation. I personally believe that over the long haul, inflation will get under control. So we're better off having shorter term protection on tips. This is not the first time we're hearing about inflation, so they're a little bit expensive right now, but it's still good protection. Oh, Michael, last question. Bitcoin, crypto, are you interested in putting that in your clients' portfolios just for a little fun? No, we're not putting Bitcoin or any other kind of crypto into our clients' portfolios. There's definitely something that you should be aware of and learn about. The idea for me though, is that much like gold, if you will, there really is no expected return. There's no utility to these items. Uh, There's no cash flow. There's no dividend. There's no earnings. And the price that you're going to pay for crypto is going to simply just be based on what somebody's willing to sell it for. And there's no idea what it's going to be worth in the future. Okay, if you have a question for us, all you need to do is go to jillonmoney.com, click on the contact button, and we'll get your note. Don't forget to let us know if you want to come on the air. We'd love to have you. Mark does all that hard work. Any information that you have heard about on this broadcast and you need more, 
just go to the website, jillonmoney.com, click the contact button and try to check out the resource section. Uh, Mark, I have a feeling if they ever do anything with Build Back Better, I'm going to be doing a deep dive and we'll have to put that up in the resource section. But if you have any ideas for us, things that you think we should actually put on our resource section, let us know. We'd be happy to do it. This is a great community. We learn from you every single day. Remember to put your hands metaphorically on someone's back. Grit, growth, grace. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.